thank you so much for joining us. And a, and a special shout out to Dawn, uh, who we had a little programming change. Um, and Hyundai was unfortunately unable to join us. So Dawn has stepped in um, in true like can superhero fashion uh, to join our panel this morning. So thank you so much. Uh, I, I am not Hyundai, and uh, had I known I was going to be doing this, I would not have been at Snapchat until 2 o'clock in the morning last night. So. But those are where the great can stories come from, is when you have to, you go, you go out late and then get on stage. Um, Want to kick off, I uh, would love for the two of you to introduce yourselves um, and share with everyone a little bit about, uh, about your roles and, and, and your companies. We'll start with you, Oz. Great. Um, so welcome, everybody. Thanks for uh, listening to us. Um, Ozizioni, CEO and co-founder of Clinch. Uh, Clinch is a, is a SaaS platform that provides um, DCO and, and omni-channel ad serving in addition to uh, a platform that allows workflow automation for the planning of DCO and ad serving, right? Because that's one of the biggest problems that we've identified and we're gonna talk about it, is how to create that end-to-end -end solution where you can have the teams collaborate, plan, execute, measure, and eventually uh, understand the data. We provide all that for all the different channels and verticals uh, for brands. And again, thanks for everyone for coming out. This is amazing just to sit here and look at this view. So uh, appreciate it. My name is Don Sklenka. I uh, lead our Dentsu DCO Solutions team. Um, our team's objective is to work across our network, our global network of teams and agencies and clients and brands to help them uh, evangelize the use of DCO, uh, to help educate them on the use of DCO, why to use it, when to use it, when not to use it. Um, and help them ultimately use the technology uh, as a value add to their business. Not just, we use tech and then magic button, it's done. We wanna make sure that we use the tech and as a value add for our clients and their business. Don, what's so interesting is, is there's been a real evolution of your job um, that I think really underscores the, the growth and importance around DCO um, from an industry standpoint, but, but at, but at Dentsu really leading in that. Um, so how have you gotten to this role um, in, in that way? Yeah, I, I would say three or four years ago, if we were having this conversation, DCO would be up here as this new incremental shiny object. Look at this fun new thing that we're doing. We would have those types of conversations. The trend and the evolution is there is an expectation from brands and clients that this has to be part of the way that we go to market. We have to be able to leverage data in a smart way. We have to be able to leverage automation in a smart way. We have to be able to leverage uh, creative production agility in a smart way. And so that is an expectation now. So my role shifted because as part of that expectation from Dentsu, we need to be able to make sure that we are there with our clients along this journey not waiting for our clients to wait for us. We need to make sure that we're ahead of that. So we partner with Clinch as truly a transformational partner in this to make sure that we are helping our clients in this evolution from what was a shiny object a couple of years ago to now an expectation as, you know, as part of their media program. Uh, at Adweek, we've, we've showed up at Can this year around the, the theme of the business case for creativity. Um, a big part of that was across the entire ecosystem, um, everyone, whether you are a brand, an agency, a media company, um, you're being asked to grow your business. Um, business growth is always, but particularly right now, um, you know, at the top of, of the priority list. But, but doing that often with, with fewer resources, at scale, as fast as you possibly can do it. The conversation at CAN over the last few days um, has really been around AI and generative AI to get there, but that's not the only way to grow your business at scale. Um, and so how, how can DCO um, enable brands uh, to grow faster? Oz, would love to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, so I, I think um, it starts with the name, right? It's like DCO is dynamic creative optimization or content optimization, then automatically people think, okay, this is just creative and we're gonna get performance and they think, okay, this is A-B testing and this is kind of like the end result that we're looking for. But for us, what happened with generative AI 
is great. It's kind of like the, the trigger for a revolution. It's like suddenly people realize that's exactly what we need. We need faster. We need like speed and scale, right? For either the same amount of budget or much, much less. We can get to where we want to get much in, in much better efficiency uh, and be more, much more effective. DCO is actually providing all of that already. And it's already implemented for a lot of brands and a lot of agencies. But sometimes the perception is this is the end game. This is, how, this is what we do for optimization of creative. In reality, what DCO um, provides whoever is using it is really workflow automation and a lot of efficiency throughout the whole process. Because you have the media plan and you have the audiences and you know who you want to show an ad and when. But the big question, especially with an emphasis on creativity, is what are we going to show them once we, you know, we meet them on every channel and every touch point? And that's exactly where creative strategy and, and you know, the right creative strategy planning um, takes place. And you need to automate that because you need scale and you need to do it across all the different channels. And you have multiple audiences and you have multiple data signals that needs to be fully automated. And again, it's already here. It's already implemented. You just got to realize that it's throughout the whole process and not just the optimization, which is a given. Yeah, I mean, l let's let's be honest here. It wouldn't be a panel at at Cannes if AI was not brought up. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, it's literally probably been every single panel in some way, shape, or form, which is interesting because all of a sudden there's this awakening to use AI to to automate creative to get faster to market. And, and you know, Oz and I are sitting here going, "That's it's available now. We we can do this. Like we don't have to wait. We don't have to have uh, machine generated copy to get to this automation to get to this speed." So. Um, it's an interesting way that all of a sudden we've latched on to this AI, you know, acronym, uh, but it's been there for a while. It's there right now. Um, and so, you know, it's, 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 that's what DCO is in a nutshell. It helps you automate. It helps you get faster to market. It helps you reduce your production time. It helps you run longer campaigns because you're not waiting for creative to get built. That is, that's why AI is so exciting because, oh, we can do all this now. That's also available now. So I've been in this business for... Uh, a really long time. Um, I've been in digital media since uh, 2003, um, which means I started off when I was 12. Um, but I was going to say 13. Yeah, but, okay, that but. works too. At least I was a teenager. Um, so, but it, it feels like we've been so, I mean, it was so manual then, and it feels like, and there obviously has been massive advancement in the last 20 years, but like, why is it still today? so manual dco obviously is a solution for that but yet for certain places and people adoption has been slow so so why are why aren't we there already as a like fully adopted industry on dco because it feels like we've been talking about this for a long time yeah. let's get spicy oz come on yeah. this is a throwdown oz yeah i mean ch change is difficult right i mean people like to do what they're used to or what they've been taught and you know they, they they come to work in the morning they were trained on specific platforms with a specific process and that's what they do and and to come in and say oh there's innovation first of all there's a lot of innovation all around right so to know what's best for for me and what's going to get me you know with more efficiency and, and again faster better it, it's hard um it, it's very hard to differentiate and i think you know, if you add the fear, if you had, if you add the, the change, if you add the variety of different platforms, sometimes it's very hard to make the right choice and understand what's what's the right platform for you or what's the right process for you. Um, you know, that's that's one thing that we're seeing. The other thing that we're seeing is like there's a lack of education in the industry. Okay, people don't necessarily understand everything that's around them. Uh, a lot of what we do is really educate agencies and brands uh, what it means. I mean, we're talking here about DCO, um, you know, and, and as we said, a lot of people immediately think of A-B testing, optimization, um, you know, retargeting. I'm going to see the same ad of the product I already bought multiple times. Yeah, that's, again, that's five years ago, and that's just a, a niche of what DCO offer. The workflow automation and everything that happens behind the scenes is much, much bigger and broader. Uh, and it's something that needs to be educated to the market because, again, people don't fully understand what it means. Yeah, I, I would say the analogy could be 
if, if you knew that there was the best panel at Cannes out on that cruise ship, you knew it. You knew it was there, but you've got to get out to that cruise ship. It means that you've got to swim all the way out there. You've got to get to that point, but you know it's there. You're probably just going to go, eh, this one's, this one's pretty good. You know, we're doing it this way. And I think that's a lot of what this situation is. You know, everything is, is okay. Everything is working, you know, as it is now. So you know that there's a better solution out there, but it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some evolution. It's going to take some change to get to that point. You know, that's what we are trying to do. And I'm sure, Clinch, you know, you guys are running into that all over the place. Yeah, and there's a little bit of also disconnect between the, let's say, the sea level and the operational level. Sometimes the operational level is right. really excited about something, but right. the sea level, you know, is well, detached yeah. or vice versa. And I was going to ask John for you. Obviously, where you sit in a in a large holding company, where is the and and Dentsu has been leading in 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 this. They actually have someone in your role dedicated to it. But where when you're working, you know, across the portfolio. Um, who, where do you find the hardest buy-in? Is it is it within the agency? Is it at the brand? So, uh, we're, yeah, now we're gonna get spicy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I think it's the hands-on keys. Um, you know, at, at this level, you're saying we got to do this. You know, at this level, okay, let's figure out how to get it done. And this level is the, the folks that are getting it done. And I think it's it's the folks that are having to you know get it done. That's probably the hardest. Um, because it's really th like you know I was saying it's th it's their jobs, their roles, their you know, their their lives. You know, from a job perspective, they don't want to affect that with doing something wrong. Right. So that's probably the 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 biggest internal hurdle on the on the client side, um, where, where the where the where our brands are pushing us. That's when it's perfect. That's when everything runs great. When we are having to kind of convince. Then it's then we got to start doing ROI calculations and ROAS calculations and what every dollar gets spent where. Then it's you know then it's a back and forth, back and forth. So it's a it's a bit of both. Yeah, and I think what we're talking about is really how do you make it a default, right? Because that, exactly. that's that's the end game. It's like, you know, we were talking about that. W what is this CEO today, right? This CEO is literally every campaign that you're running because you have multiple audiences, you have multiple channels, you have multiple KPIs, uh, data signals. So even the simplest campaign that used to be manual two, three years ago, and it was simple, now it becomes complex. And you need automation uh, and AI to actually start running it. You need, you need tech, right, creative tech behind it. We do have a lot of success with a lot of brands that understand it, and you know, Dentsu, for example, understand it clearly. Um, but what we're talking about is really making it the standard, and that's what needs to happen. Um, but we are seeing a lot of brands heading in that direction, a lot of adoption, a lot of understanding of we need that type of efficiency. But even more than that, the data that you get back from those executions, finally understand what is working, but not just what, but why it's working. I'm showing multiple ads to multiple people. Why are they engaging with my content? What is the message? What is the, the, the creative element that's actually working for those specific individuals? That type of data can only come from a DCO execution, and you can feed it back to your audiences that you can actually improve the media and the audience segmentation that you're doing on your campaigns. And uh, I assure you next year at this time, there won't be the same amount of panels that are talking about generative AI. That, that will be now in the past. The, the conversation will now be what we're talking about, which is, well, how do we convince brands to do it? How do we cons pe convince people to change their jobs? Because you still have to manage you know, those solutions. So this is we're, we're in that evolution now, that phase of it's not a shiny object in, anymore. It's now we need it. It has to be part of the way that we do business digitally. It has to be the way that we go to market. So what's an example of a campaign that, that each of you have worked on recently um, utilizing DCO that is really uh, driven, uh, yeah, effectiveness, uh, business growth? Oz, we'll start with you. Sure. So uh, Hyundai is a great example, right? Um, in Hyundai, for example, uh, we've been working for them for a, a long while, and you know m many difficult needs. But you can you can see, you know, and think of like automotive, right? They have tier one, tier two, tier three, um, localization, different models, different languages, offers that are keep on changing. But I think the main thing was really the time to market, right? Reducing the time to market so you can have. Um, your ads more time live in the market than what you had before. And we managed to reduce and improve the efficiency um, about 80%, but also reduce the time 
that it takes them to get an ad from production, creative production to the market in front of consumers or prospects um, from one week that they were in the market to like two and a half weeks that they're in the market, okay? Just by utilizing DCO and automation behind the scenes. And that's something that is, that is huge in terms of, you know, how they can reach their consumers and prospects. I'll play the role of Hyundai. We did a great job on that. On that <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll go through a, 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 a really unique case. Hopefully we never have to do this again, in all honesty. So it was uh, March of 2021. Um, we had the challenge to uh, message and deliver helpful advertising to uh, customers or prospects or users all over the United States to get a vaccine. And part of that process, as we all know, every single person in here had a different availability, different registration, different brand, different use. So how were we able to message every single person here differently, relevantly, make it helpful advertising, not just go buy something. It's we're trying to help people out. So we leveraged DCO and Clinch uh, and, and Albertsons to identify a user's location and say, okay, we know where the closest pharmacy is to you. Uh, are there vaccines available? If yes, are there registrations available? If yes, serve this creative that has messaging uh, that is relevant to that individual in that location. And we were able to do that nationwide. And we literally would not be able to do that without DCO. That was solving a problem. And again, I, ho I hope we never have to do it again, but it's the idea of how do we take data, how do we take technology to help solve a problem? And that's an example of a, of a case study where we really leveraged DCO. We wouldn't have been able to do it without it. So when people go back next week, when we leave this beautiful location and they're going back to their offices, um, what is the one thing, if they're not currently utilizing DCO or they're doing it on very small scale, what is you know, one or two very actionable things that, that they could actually go back to their office, to their companies, um, to, to move forward with this? You email Oz at clinch.co. Uh, I, I think they just kind of look, have to look at themselves in the mirror a second. And, you know, as you're doing your day job, that's 100% of your time, kind of ask yourself, is there a better way that I could be doing this? Is there something that I could add more value to our clients and brands? Because every brand is looking at every agency at the same time going, how can we get more value out of you? And every brand manager is saying, how can I get more value for my, my role, my position? So. Part of it is, is am I doing the most with what I have available to me? That would be my quick one minute. Yeah, I'll take a, a different angle as, as a partner, right, um, for brands and agencies. Um, I think you should ask yourself, um, what is really difficult for me, right? What are the challenges that I have? Um, and what is preventing me to get that speed and scale and efficiency that I'm looking for right now because the competition in the market is fierce and if you're not doing it right now your competitors will and I think what we're looking at and talking to our partners is again DCO yes the end game how do you get there and what you will realize is that a lot of the process happens in silos teams are working separately on different platforms those platforms don't communicate the data that comes in you can probably show it, but it's not actionable. The whole idea is really bring all of that together, right? And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make that workflow of planning across all those channels, across all those teams, easy, fast, automated, visual, intuitive. And I think without that, there's no way to go forward and get better and better and especially more efficient in times like you know, these that it's really, really important for everybody. Silo busting is such an important topic. It's a, it's uh, a whole different panel. It, it is, but um, what I but it but what it really goes to is collaboration, and the two of you are obviously fantastic collaborators. Um, so how how can companies come together like like Clinch and Dentsu have? You know how how do you? Uh, collaborate to, to collectively both move your business forward, but also the industry forward? I, I think we just had this conversation yesterday or, or whatever, this morning or last night. I don't know what time it was. <laughs> uh, but it was really about thinking about the end solution and not just thinking about an immediate, you know, here's a tech sale, how do we sell a tech in, but what is, what is our end solution from a business perspective? 
what's the end solution from a brand or client perspective? What's the end solution from a technology perspective? You look at it that way. What, what is it we're trying to achieve? You know, how do we get out to the cruise ship? What is it that we're trying to achieve out there? How do we get there versus this step right here? Um, that's achievable, but you know, think about the end solution and rather than just this micro, you know, individual, you know, we got an additional CPM that's four cents or whatever it may, you know, think about the end solution. Think about the lifetime value. Think about, um, you know, what we're ultimately trying to achieve at the end of the day and, 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 and then bring the solution there. Yeah, I think it also comes down to partnership. I think the transparency between the two sides is really important. Uh, we always come in and say, we're not a vendor, we're a partner. If you want you know, run with us like one campaign or two campaigns, that's not what we want to do, um, even if there's a lot of money involved, right? I mean, what we're looking for is really to build that type of relationship that we share the roadmap, we understand the challenges. I mean, it's important that you tell us what Everybody has challenges, right? We have challenges, all our partners you know, and clients have challenges, and we build something together. And I think for a brand and an agency, it's really important that they choose the right partners going forward, or else they're never gonna be able to achieve what they're trying to achieve. Because you shouldn't build for the next three or six months. You should build for the next three to five years, okay? And you need to be able to say that, and know that your partners are gonna build with you and based on your needs, and they're gonna be reactive uh, and proactive, um, and that relationship and openness is really, really important. Yeah, it, it's an investment of not just money, but it's an investment of time and energy. Like, make sure that we're, you know, we're all having the energy to see that end solution, so. Um, so final question, um, what do you think is gonna be the biggest uh, trend, opportunity in DCO in the next, 12 months in between when we what when we get back here together next June what are we going to be talking about for us where we see the biggest opportunity and that's why I said that like generative AI is, is, a, is a great trigger for that evolution for us uh, because you know there is still a lot of stuff to do right I mean DCO doesn't solve everything but there's still work to be done what we're doing right now is implementing generative AI into our platform, but not the obvious way, because when we come and say, hey, generative AI, oh yeah, you can create images and text and everything. Yes, that's the obvious. But we're looking really and talking to our partners, like what is the stuff that takes you the most time that you hate to do, right? That is very challenging and difficult. So think about, you know, strategy planning, QA, reviewing, um, reporting, analytics, understanding like all the insights, all that stuff, if you start to implement generative AI into that process, then I think what we're gonna sit here and talk about next year is really how amazing generative AI was implemented into the process and made everything simple. And it's not replacing people in a way, you know, in, in some ways, yes, I mean, it's, it's inevitable, but I think people will start to become more of like machine operators in a way Instead of actually doing the work of building the strategy in the QA, they'll be managing that machine and be able to do strategy and thinking a lot more. Uh, I, gu I guess my answer after giving it 30 seconds of thought uh, w would be, um, if you said the future, what's the future of this industry? What's the future of this kind of vertical within the industry? I, I feel like technology tends to have the ability to break down walls and to break down barriers, meaning that it kind of threads itself within you know, a variety of different, you know, industries, a variety of different uh, publishers or whatever they may be, platforms. I think that's where the future, whether it's going to go there or not, it kind of needs to go there, w meaning that there aren't walls between Meta and Google and Amazon, et cetera. Like those walls at some point in time should either get broken down or technology starts to kind of weave its way through there. And I think AI actually from a, from a constant conversation is going to start to do that because Everyone's going to want to be able to have a solution in play. In order to do that, you're going to have to work together, break down those barriers between platforms and publishers and technologies, and there's going to have to be a, a consistent thread. So it's, I don't think it's there today, but I would, again, I would say in a year, you know, I'm hoping that that is kind of broken down a bit through the use of technology such as DCO. Well, thank you both so much. I know that uh, Dawn and Oz are going to be arranging a swim for everyone. Yeah. To uh, the, to I the have yacht. four days to get out there. Yeah, so uh, I hope everyone uh, joins the DCO journey, the swim with them. Thank you all so much. <laughs>
Thank you. Appreciate it.